guys, today I'm going to be doing a what I thought on stuff I bought. So basically what I'm going to be doing is going through a bunch of products that I hauled about a year ago, a little over a year ago at this point. It was in December that I hauled this, not of this previous year, but of 2014. And so I'm just going to go back over some of the things and what I thought about them, if I still like them, if I didn't like them, what I thought of the quality, and basically just give a short review. For this particular one, I'm not going to review everything just because I had a ton of samples. Like I had a little Sephora sample bag in there. And I had won a prize from Cherish from Pretty Pistol 86. So I won't really be going through those things in particular. If you're curious about any of it, let me know. I will go through the things that I really remember. But as far as samples go, there's a ton of stuff that I just don't remember very well. I'm also not going to be trying on the clothes for you. So if you're curious about that, I tried on most of them in my actual haul video. So I will leave that linked right here in case you guys are curious about checking that out. You can just click that I and it should take you to the haul video for the original video. I just don't really feel like trying them all on again. Um, because I'm lazy. So if you're interested in seeing how the clothes look on, you can go check that out. So first off, I had a purchase from Sephora. So the very first thing that I had was the Ola Henriksen Three Little Wonders kit. So I bought the full size that also had a face wash in it. The face wash I'm working on using up now. I don't love it. And then I recently bought a little kit again. This was a $24 kit. I think the original one that I bought was like 70 but I had remembered loving it, and in my video I loved it. I tried samples, it had been in a favorite before, and I loved it, but I don't really remember it that well, like why I loved it so much, so I figured I'd try it again. So here I have the Truth Serum, the Invigorating Night Treatment, and then this is the Sheer Transformation Moisturizer. This always just comes with the sets, and I don't like it that much. I mean, it's fine. It's not good or bad. It's just okay. I'm not wowed by it. This is not something that convinces me. But I had really, really liked these two, so I don't know why I liked them so much, though. Like, I'm trying them now, and they're fine, but I don't see a major difference when I use these to when I don't use them. My skin was actually going through, like, a really nice phase for a while where I had very little acne for, like, a couple weeks which is miraculous for me and then I started using this again and then I went through my period and then I had acne and whatever because of hormones and whatnot so I don't know I'm not convinced that these are worth the money anymore I've tried other serums that I think I like better that I think are more worth the money these I just don't know why I liked them so much why I was so convinced that they were so great I really can't figure it out from my perspective now because I don't see a huge difference. Then I mentioned I had a bunch of samples from a Sephora sample bag. A lot of them I really just don't remember. One thing that I did get that I've been working through and a lot of people have been talking about recently is the Smashbox 24 hour photo finish shadow primer. This I like okay. I didn't like for a while when I first started using it. I like it better now. I found that when I use this and then like a shadow base on top of it, I need to blend the shadow base on top of it almost immediately. Otherwise it'll be hard for it to blend together. Um, I really do like this. I think my shadows stay nice when I use it. It's a good base. It's probably not my favorite ever, but I do like it. There's a lot of people that really rave about it. I think it's fine. I don't know that I would buy it again, but I think it's fine. I also got the Pharrell Girl perfume that I remember really not liking. It was not a scent that I was a fan of. I had gotten the Agave Healing Oil Hair Treatment, which I just did a Throwback Thursday January Favorites video, and I had raved about it. I'll leave that Throwback Thursday video here, but... I apparently loved that. A year out, I don't really remember it, and I don't know why I liked it quite as much as I did. I really just don't remember it all that well. So that's one that I kind of want to try out again and see why I liked it so much. Um, but I really raved about that one, so apparently I liked it when I first got it. And a lot of the stuff that I got in that particular combo, like there's a lot of little lip products and things, I think I got rid of a fair amount of them. One thing that I do still have is this Kat Von D Everlasting Lipstick in Bachelorette. And this one is like a pinky, a bright pinky red. This I really, really liked. I was surprised by that. I'm a big fan of that, actually. From that particular haul, I also got the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. And actually, if you've seen my anti-haul decluttering, which I will leave linked here if you guys are interested in checking it out, I actually sold that palette because I was never using it. So it looked really pretty. A lot of people rave about it. It was a huge cult following. And I just never reached for it. There were other highlighters I liked better. I don't feel like my makeup looked very good when I used it as like a setting powder underneath my eyes. I just wasn't impressed by it and I never reached for it. So I sold that to somebody on YouTube back at the beginning of January because I wasn't using it. And I figured somebody else might as well get some love out of it since I wasn't using it. I got my first Soap and Glory kit last year. And so what I have right now, I don't have any of the full sizes of them anymore. But this is the Soap and Glory hand food, which was in that set, which is one of my favorites. I love the Soap and Glory hand food. It is an amazing hand cream, especially in the original scent. I don't like the other scents nearly as much, but the original scent is one of my favorites. I had the Soap and Glory Clean On Me Shower Gel 
shower wash whatever that I really really liked I used up the whole thing and then I have a little mini size as well that I'm saving for traveling and then what else was in there I think there was a body butter in there as well the righteous body butter which I absolutely love so actually shortly after this haul I went kind of soap and glory crazy because it was on sale at Sephora because it went out of Sephora and into Ulta it went on sale at HSN and there was a ton of sets on sale there and there were coupons and stuff so I bought a ton of soap and glory stuff and I love it I love their original Righteous Body Butter. That smells my favorite. I don't like the other scents nearly as much. There's been some other stuff that I've tried that I'm not in love with. I had a scrub of your life and a shampoo that I got from them that I didn't love, but I did like a lot of the stuff that I've gotten from them. I got a 500 point perk that was a Smashbox kit basically, so it had their face primer, which I don't love. I have a bunch of samples right now and I'm working through. It's not my favorite ever. It's fine, but I don't absolutely love it. They had an under eye primer, which I actually did kind of like. I tried to get the e.l.f. under eye primer as kind of a dupe for it, and it's fine. I feel like this under eye primer was better than that one, but I don't know that I would spend the full amount for just an under eye primer. It wasn't that good, I guess. It had a little duo that came from their um, double exposure palette, or full exposure palette. I don't remember which one it was called. I actually sold that off in a set with some other stuff as well because I was going to give it away and somebody wanted it. So I sold that off in my anti-haul. The lip gloss, I didn't really like that much. I think I decluttered that and gave that to my sister or my best friend. The full exposure mascara I have not used yet. Those kits I think are interesting to try sometimes, but a lot of the times I don't end up trying everything that's in it or liking everything that's in it, so they don't always end up to be completely worth it. But that's fine. I got a little sample of the Laura Mercier Smooth Finish Flawless Fluid, and this is just like a very light coverage. The color is okay for me, but I wish it had fuller coverage. I didn't love it because it doesn't have great coverage. I want to try to use it up sometime this year because I've had it for a while now, obviously. Um, but I need to mix it with other things just because I don't really like the way that it looks on my skin alone. I like a little bit fuller coverage than this. Back in January, I'd mentioned my first acquaintance brightening serum and spot corrector, and that I got through Influencer. It is a spendy serum for sure. It's, I think, normally like $175 or something like that. I actually just mentioned that in my Throwback Thursday January Favorites video as well. I really, really like that serum. It is one of my absolute favorites. I do feel like it makes a huge difference in my skin. It makes my skin brighter. It makes my acne spots go away. It makes my skin really nice and smooth. But it is so expensive that I don't really like to purchase it. I had that one that I got from Influencer. The company contacted me and talked to me about trying out their dietary supplements. And so with that, they sent the serum again, which I really appreciated. So I really like the dietary su supplements, and I used up another one of the spot correctors and then I got another one because they had a sale that was like 40% off in September on Fridays or something like that and so I bought one more because it was way cheap but I have a hard time encouraging myself to buy it when it's normal price right now they have a deal that's like 14% off for Valentine's Day and I still don't know that that's enough to convince me to want to purchase the full size of it Again, because it's so expensive, but I really do like it, and I do think it makes a huge difference. Then I mentioned my prize pack from Cherish. There was a bunch of stuff in it that was really good, like I used up the e.l.f. eye primer. There's some really pretty eyeshadows in it, and there were a few things that I decluttered because they weren't necessarily my style. Like there was a dark gray Sephora eyeshadow that I gave to my sister. She does more smoky eyes than I do. Just things like that. So there were some really great things in it. I really appreciated her gift, but there were some things in it that weren't necessarily my style that ended up going away. If you're curious about what specifically I kept and if there were any things I decluttered, you can let me know that in the comments below and I can do a separate video on that one. I just didn't want to go into it during this one. At the end of my haul, I mentioned a couple of things that I got from Ulta because in the middle of the video I went out to Ulta and then came back later because my battery had died. So the first thing that I have and I actually really, really love now is the Ava NYC Therapy Session Hair Mask. This smells amazing and it's a huge tub for like $13 and you can get it on sale a lot. I know that you can use coupons on this. They have sales for it a lot. It smells really good. It makes my hair really soft. I really like the Ava NYC hair products. I think that they're great. I haven't tried out their dry shampoo yet, but everything else that I've tried, I've really, really enjoyed. So I would highly recommend this. I just ran out of my macadamia deep hair repair therapy mask, whatever the heck that's called. And I would probably stick with this instead of that because it is cheaper and I think it works just as well. I also mentioned in that video that I had gotten the um, Body Shop Tea Tree Oil Kit. So there's a kit that normally comes with about five different things. It has a cleanser, a toner, their tea tree moisturizer, the little tea tree oil, this thingy, and a mask, like a little sample foil packet of a mask. 
And so I really like that set. I think it's a great set. I tend to not go through things at equal amounts of times though. So the cleanser right now is in my shower and I'm probably about a fourth of the way through the cleanser. I'm almost done with the moisturizer, I think. I don't know, I couldn't find the moisturizer, but I love that moisturizer. It is one of my absolute favorites, I adore it. The tea tree oil, I haven't been using too much lately because I've been using other spot correctors, but I really do like this. And I think my favorite thing about that kit is the toner. So this is the tea tree skin clearing toner. My only thing with it is like the stuff tends to kind of settle on the bottom, so you always have to shake it up. I actually just rebought this alone because I still had some of everything else left over and Body Shop stuff was on sale. And so I really, really like this toner though. I do feel like the tea tree line helps keep my skin clearer for sure. I'm a big fan of it though. So I would highly recommend it if you struggle with acne. I do think it helps a lot. And then you can definitely get the sets on sale. I think Body Shop is buy one, get one half off at Ulta right now. Um, so yeah, I definitely like this stuff. I just have to buy it at different times because I run out of different stuff at different times. But the set itself is a great value if you don't have any of it. All right, everything that I have left are clothes from mostly Aeropostale and Charlotte Russe. And then I have like one Forever 21 shirt that I didn't bring with me. So the first thing that I had was this pea coat that I got from Aeropostale. I looked out when I was looking at the Aeropostale website because I had originally had a pea coat that looked like this one that I loved that didn't have the hood. So this one is just like a pretty burgundy peacoat and it like flares out at the back a little bit. I really, really like this peacoat for the spring and the fall. It looks pretty nice. It's warm enough that I don't have to worry too much about being cold if I wear this. It even transitioned into the winter a little bit for me, but this year I ended up buying a Columbia coat that has like the um, reflective inner heat stuff to keep you a little bit warmer because I have morning duty outside and it tends to get really cold when I have morning duty outside. So I just wanted to get a little bit of a thicker coat and that one was on sale for like $70 on Amazon. This one I lucked out and ended up getting for like 50 or less because I think there was a coupon code. I really do like the Aeropostale pea coats. I think they last for quite a while. I had my one previous to this that lasted me like three or four years and I really, really enjoy these coats. I think that they look pretty nice and they're fun because they have fun pops of color. So if you can ever find these, I recommend them. I think they work pretty well. My only issue with this one was it had a hole in the pocket within the first like week that I wore it, but I sewed it up and fixed it and it was fine. The next thing that I have is a sweater that is actually probably one of my most worn school pieces. So this is just like this cream colored knit, cable knit sweater. It's got a little bit of a high low situation to it. So I love wearing it with like my red jigging type pants to school because it works out pretty well. It looks nice. It looks professional. My only thing with this is I've worn it so much now that it doesn't really feel like fabric. It like, it crunches almost. I don't know. I need a new white sweater, I think. But I really did like this one. I've worn it a ton. I'll probably wear it for a little while longer. I don't know if I can wear it much past this year, but for as cheap as I got it, I'm not going to complain about the quality because I think I probably ended up paying about $20 for it. And I wore it a ton. I wore it probably at least once a week for most of the winter and fall time. So I really am a big fan of that one. I also got a gray sweater that is not my favorite now that I've gotten it. So it has little thumb holes, which I was really excited about. I forgot to grab that one. But the problem with the thumb holes are they are almost too tight. And so when I actually wear the sweatshirt with my hands on the thumb holes, it kind of hurts my hands, which is unfortunate. It looks really cute and it is pretty comfortable as long as I don't use the thumb holes, but that was one of the things I was excited about and kind of bummed about that it doesn't work. But it is really warm. It's cozy. It's fine. I like it. I got some boot socks that were fine. I haven't really worn any of them this year for whatever reason, but they were always comfortable when I wore them last year. And then I had a little Forever 21 shirt that had the to be or not to be speech by Hamlet on it that I got for like eight dollars. It's a really soft shirt. I really like it. It's a fine shirt. It's still hanging together pretty well for being a Forever 21 shirt. It hasn't fallen apart on me yet, which is exciting. Then I also mentioned that I went to Charlotte Russe. So the first thing that I had mentioned from Charlotte Russe was this plaid shirt dress. And this I actually really liked. I'm probably going to get rid of it soon now because it doesn't quite fit me as well as I would like anymore. So I've gained a little bit of weight and this shirt I mentioned in my last video, I'd worn this about once and then like the arm ripped on it and so I had to re-sew it. So after I re-sewed it, it's a little bit tight in the arms now and it's not super comfortable to wear. I think it looks really cute, but I just don't wear it very often because it's not as comfortable. So I'm actually probably gonna get rid of that pretty soon just because it doesn't fit me exactly the way I wish it would. I probably should have sized up one more size realistically. I also mentioned a plaid shirt that you guys actually probably see me wear pretty frequently. It's like a white and blue plaid. I obviously really like plaid. I got this shirt at Old Navy yesterday, the one that I was wearing in my last two videos I got at Old Navy. I really like plaid. I really liked that shirt. It was pretty cheap and it's really comfortable. I wear it a lot. My only thing with that is I wish it were a little bit longer. It fits really well and it's a little bit flowy 
in the body but then it's kind of short which is kind of annoying to me but I like it a lot I wear it a lot anyway and then I mentioned that I had two pairs of leggings that I was super super excited to find I had a gray pair and a burgundy pair that I got that were the Charlotte Russe skin tight leggings they were the first leggings that I found that actually fit me decently although I will say that this past year I found some leggings from American Eagle that I really really liked that fit a little bit better overall so I got a couple of pairs of those that I mentioned in a haul a little while back. I don't know, I'll link that video here if you guys are interested in checking that out. But I almost like the American Eagle ones better than the Charlotte Russe ones, but I will say the Charlotte Russe ones overall held up better than the American Eagle ones have. My American Eagle ones that I've only had for a few months are fading already, and I didn't find that problem with the Charlotte Russe ones. So that's kind of interesting. Um, I still wear both. I still like both. They're good. I just prefer the fit of the American Eagle ones a little bit better. And then I had a couple of sweaters from Maurice's. So I like shopping at Maurice's. I feel like it's a nice store for cheap and the quality isn't terrible. I actually went into Maurice's yesterday in an attempt to buy some more sweaters and the people were like so aggressively helpful that it scared me off. I hate when salespeople are like constantly bombarding you and you can't walk like five steps without somebody asking you, hey, are you finding everything okay? No, just leave me alone, let me shop in peace. That's why I prefer online shopping sometimes, and like that's a reason that I enjoy shopping on Stitch Fix, because I hate when people keep talking to you, <laughs> which I know is like super antisocial of me, but it's totally true. So the first thing that I have was this gray and black sweater. I really like this sweater. It's kind of a high-low one. This is one that I wore quite a bit to school last year. I'm, I'm a big fan of this one. And it was fairly inexpensive. I need to go onto the Maurice's website and see if there are any good sweater deals right now because that one was super cute. And then my other one I didn't like quite as much as that one, but I still think it's cute. So it is this purple and gray striped sweater, which I really like. I wish that this section up here was a little bit more closely knit. I don't wear this one to school because like the knitting is so far apart and I feel like it's probably not completely appropriate, but I like it. I just don't wear it as often because I don't like the knitting of it as much. But Maurice's is a good place to check out cheaper clothes. I got a lot of my school wardrobe at Maurice's when I first started teaching. Probably about 90% of my wardrobe was Maurice's at that point, but it's expanded now. But when I first started teaching, I got a ton of my clothes there. I would love to know if you guys have any thoughts on any of the things that I bought or mentioned. If you guys have bought anything recently and you have thoughts on it already or suggestions on anything that I mentioned, I would love to hear that in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.